My name is Steven Knezovic. I'm standing in a pasture. If you look, uh, I don't know how well we can see uh, the background, uh, a little far in the distance, you can see uh, Lewis and Clark Lake, which is one of the seven lakes on the, uh, on the Missouri River. And today we're going to visit with you about Eastern uh, Red Cedar Control. Uh, Eastern Red Cedar is a native to uh, about just about any state east of uh, Wyoming, Wyoming, east of the Rockies. Uh, looking at the overall biology of, uh, of Eastern Red Cedar, obviously it's a tree, it's a perennial, and it will start off like a little seed or little seedlings and typically grows about a foot to two feet per year. Uh, in this pasture you can see a mix of different sizes of trees. In fact, the one that are right behind me, uh, these are all about five, uh, uh, three to five, uh, three to five footers. And uh, this tree can grow as tall as 30 foot or 40 foot. If you let it grow for 20 or 30 years, they'll get some height, that's for sure. And uh, one interesting thing uh, uh, on the biology of this tree that you have a male and female tree. We call that daisha species where you have male flowers on one tree and the female on another. And then uh, the bad news is that you cannot really distinguish what's male and what's female until they are about six to seven year old. I uh, can show these. Those are the uh, the, the little berries uh, that female trees produce and uh, and then that's the uh, that's the way uh, to distinguish the male male and female trees eastern red cedar in my opinion it's uh, it's a beautiful tree uh, it covers the land uh, pretty good so if you want to have some land uh, or some vegetation on your land this would be one of the tree that's pretty resilient uh, to a local climate it's a native it's a native tree, so, uh, so therefore it's got uh, resistance to all kinds of diseases and insects and everything. So, uh, you know, we're talking about growing grass. This is rangeland and pasture. We want to grow a good quality grass to produce a good quality beef. And basically anything that encroaches, anything that encroaches your pasture, whether is that a cedar tree or whether is that a noxious weed, uh, we have a whole array of those from thistles to spurges, you name it. And uh, so anything that encroaches uh, grass production would be considered a pest. So that's why people uh, are concerned about it and they want to they wanna control it. You can look at this guy here. This is only, uh, uh, you know, a couple of three feet tall tree. This tree is probably about three, uh, three to four years old. If you uh, let this tree grow uh, for 10 years, it's going to be a 10 or 12 foot tall. If you let it grow for another 20 or 30 years, pretty much is going to look like some of these big, uh, big trees that we see here across the countryside. And if you have too many of those around, obviously they're going to turn your pasture into a forest. Not a, you know, uh, not so. Obviously, you won't be able to raise raise grass and good quality beef. Controlling cedar tree is a topic that we explored um, as part of my research program about five or six years ago. And uh, we were looking at the uh, mechanical way of controlling, we were looking at the chemical way of controlling, and then also some prescribed burns. And if I can summarize a control method in one sentence, that would be control the tree while they're small because that's the, and what I mean by small, anywhere from uh, a couple of feet tall to about a seven or eight foot tall. Uh, when the tree is taller than, than 10 foot or so, said so you don't have many options. When we say mechanical weed control, that means different things to different people. So uh, basically, uh, uh, one of the most common method uh, as part of the overall mechanical picture is to use some kind of a blade to cut the tree. Or you can use hand saw, you can use a chainsaw, or uh, you can use some heavy duty equipment that will have mechanical shears on the front or something, you know. And, and the one thing that you want to do, uh, that you want to pay attention to when you cut all these trees, you want to cut them clear at the ground level. You do not want to leave any branches attached to the trunk because those branches will produce a new tree. I guarantee you that. You can use prescribed, prescribed fire 
Uh, we used to burn prairies here, uh, you know, between these uh, few states around Nebraska uh, in the old times, much more when, than what we do now. And the fire is extremely uh, effective and uh, useful tool to control not just cedar trees in rangeland and pasture, but also uh, uh, noxious weeds, uh, shrubby, shrubby species. Uh, the fire will pretty much burn the, uh, the dry biomass. That's the fuel that will carry the fire on and will burn the dry biomass. Uh, you know, it's not going to kill the roots, you know, but it will, uh, it will kill a lot of seeds and uh, prepare the pasture for new grass to grow. Uh, and also uh, it gives you a chance to go back and do some secondary methods of control if you, uh, if you need to do some follow-up controls with the chemicals or mechanical means or so. Which sizes of trees are susceptible to the fire? Depending on the amount of fuel that carries the fire, that will depend how well your tree is going to catch on fire. If you zoom behind me, up on the top of that ridge, that's the pasture where the local landowner is actually doing uh, uh, burning every couple of three years. And he was basically able to maintain his pasture cedars uh, free uh, simply just by, uh, by fire. So. And here is a typical example where this pasture was burned. And you can see this uh, smaller tree, little shorter tree, burned pretty good and they uh, obviously it didn't regrow however this tree right next to it obviously uh, there's a lot of regrowth maybe the fire was coming from this side and it was carrying the heat and everything was burning on this side much much hotter and uh, and it was able to uh, to basically uh, kill half of this tree so to speak and you can see how the other side was not affected as much and uh, and uh, the tree is greening up really nicely so looking at the history uh, down the road what's going to happen with this tree this tree will survive will survive it looks kind of ugly uh, for in and sick uh, well, it's going to look like this for a few more few more years but eventually this part of the tree eventually is going to is going to uh, completely uh, die off and one of these branches is going to take over as a main stem and that branch can actually uh, keep on growing and producing new uh, new branches uh, all the way around uh, and basically uh, maintain the growth the growth of this tree as far as using biocontrol agents uh, for eastern red cedar control uh, personally, I'm not aware of any insects or diseases that could be used, uh, you know, to, uh, to either spray on and infect uh, large inf uh, portions of the range where you have cedar trees. But in certain parts of the country, people use goats quite effectively to control cedar trees. Chemical control of eastern red cedar. Uh, typically, when people talk about controlling something, I would say majority of the of the folks they think about, okay, what is the chemical that I can use, you know, and how much do I need to put in my tank and go out and spray. So uh, we've done research in northeast Nebraska here in Knox County. Uh, all that information is available in uh, this. Uh, EC 186, and I'm going to repeat this. If you want to read a publication on integrated uh, management of eastern red cedar, just go to University of Nebraska uh, uh, website and just do a search by uh, EC, which stands for Extension Circular, and it's number 186. Again, 186. That's where you will get a lot of information that we cover in this video. Uh, the three a herbicide that kind of uh, provided the best control in our research were uh, Gray Zone PND, Tordon, and Surmount. And they are all uh, recommended for individual tree spraying. They are recommended at the rate of about 1 to 2% of volume per volume, which basically means uh, if it's a 2%, it means 2 gallons of the chemical in 100 gallon of water. Those. Uh, uh, chemicals and those rates worked extremely well on trees that up to about a 10 foot, 10 foot tall. If you have 
a situation let's say where you had a lot of big trees you removed them and there was a lot of seeds in the seed bank a seed bank uh, earlier i talked about some of these uh, uh, berries and uh, you know these seeds can last in the soil easily for for 10 years and sprout and produce little seedlings and we've seen a lot of a lot of cases where after removing big trees, we have literally a carpet of little trees that are, you know, anywhere from half a foot to about a couple of three feet tall. Those trees you can spray uh, with the chemicals broadcast. And uh, again, the same chemicals I mentioned earlier for individual tree treatments, which are Surmount, uh, Grayzone, PND, and Tordone. Those are the three that actually can be very effective on controlling short trees broadcast. The key with the broadcast uh, control of eastern red cedar is the height of the tree. The shorter the tree, the better the control. And uh, once the trees get taller, we're talking about a four footers, five footers or six footers, you're much better off if you want to use chemicals just to do individual tree spraying. Uh, you know, like I said, most of the times uh, what uh, what ranchers do, they'll have a four-wheeler with a little tank on it or a little mule or whatever, you know, all-terrain vehicle with a tank on the back and they do individual uh, individual spraying with, uh, with a hand boom. The take-home message would be control the trees while they're small. It's a common sense. It's not a rocket science, quite frankly. I don't think I invented uh, this statement. You know, I've seen that from the research uh, data that we collected. Control them while they're small. All the trees that are up to 10 foot tall, uh, you have a lot of different options. You can cut them, you can mow them, you can uh, use the chemicals. Once the trees are past the 10 foot in height, especially if they're 20 or 30 footer, the only option really that you have for the most uh, effective way is to cut it. Those big trees you can burn, it will be cheaper than to cut, but you're gonna be looking on those trees probably for the next 10, 15 years or so. So I usually tell people, might as well cut them to start with. Mm -hmm.